We are back on the Alex Jones Show this live Tuesday, February 9th edition. And I'm delighted to be joined by a guest who's been on the show before. He's Tommy Robinson, obviously the founder of the EDL. He left that organization. Now he's an avid speaker on the problems in the Western world with the rise of Islam, ISIS, hate speech, and Sharia law. He's been liaising with the Pegida movement, um, and he was involved in the protest this past weekend in Birmingham. Obviously, other protests taking place throughout Europe against the Islamization of the West. His most recent book is Enemy of the State, and his website is tommyrobinson.co.uk. Tommy, welcome to the show. We don't have Tommy yet. What I want to talk to Tommy about when we get him on the show is the fact that there's this clip that's just come out, which is on his Twitter page, and he's basically confronted by a liberal who was attacked by Muslim migrants quite recently he attended this Pegida demonstration in Birmingham this past weekend, and obviously he tried to pull the same old trick. Oh, these beliefs, these violent acts, this rape culture is only believed by a tiny minority of Muslims. Well, if you look at the actual polls, attitudes of Muslims in the Middle East to Sharia law, to killing people who try to leave the faith of Islam, uh, two executing homosexuals, two stoning rape victims to death. The majority of those people in those countries support those beliefs. It's not a tiny minority. These are the general beliefs of Islam as contained in the Quran. And I've featured the video clip several times. There's a conference that took place, I believe, in 2013 in Norway, at which a prominent Islamic speaker uh, was addressing an audience of about 200, quote, moderate Muslims. Now, the point he made was that these so-called extremist beliefs under the doctrine of Sharia law, killing people who leave the faith of Islam, executing homosexuals, stoning rape victims to death, female genital mutilation, these beliefs have been characterized by the media as only being believed by extremist Muslims. He wasn't happy with that definition. He said that these are common beliefs shared by all, quote, moderate Muslims. Then he canvassed the audience to see if they agreed that these, quote, extremist beliefs are actually the general beliefs of most mainstream Muslims. Almost every single person in that audience of 200 predominantly Muslim men, in fact, almost entirely Muslim men, raised their hand. They agreed that these beliefs are held by moderate Muslims. So no, it's not a tiny minority of extremists. This is a regressive seventh century belief system that's completely illiberal and is in need of reform. So why again and again do we see liberals not only failing to stand up against it, but openly embracing it? We saw in Cologne, feminists handing out roses to Muslim migrants weeks, it was probably about two weeks after the mass molestation of women in Cologne by Muslim migrants. So it's not enough. They don't simply just ignore it. They actually embrace it. They're embracing a rape culture. The top feminist group in Cologne came out the day after it was made public, after the media covered it up, covered it up several days, and said, well, the real perpetrators in all this rape culture are white German men, because there are a handful of assaults at the you know, annual Oktoberfest beer festival. So that means the problem is with white German men. Compare that to hundreds of hundreds of assaults in Cologne, Hamburg, Zurich, all these are the European cities. We're gonna get into it with Tommy Robinson after the break, and we're gonna take your calls for him as well. This is Paul Joseph Watson, it's the Alex Jones Show Live. Infowars.com. Don't go away. Before the break, we've got our guest, Tommy Robinson, who, of course, is liaising with the Pegida movement. They had a big march in Birmingham this past weekend. His new book is Enemy of the State, and you can get that at tommyrobinson.co.uk. Tommy, welcome back to the show. Have me back on. Do we have Tommy? I don't have his audio. You got me there? Yeah, I can hear you now. So yep. what I wanted to discuss first is we've seen this alignment between Islamists and the left wing. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, there was footage out of Calais 
which showed these extreme left-wing protesters not only helping them storm the ferry and try to get to Britain, but they were actually attacking Calais residents in their own, on their own property, throwing bricks, etc., you know, chanting for these violent rampaging migrants throughout Calais. We've, we've had these Pegida marches this past weekend. They showed up again. The media reported it as, you know, clashes between Pegida demonstrators and these left-wing activists. So tell us what actually happened in Birmingham. Um, in Birmingham, we were quite fortunate with the way the police planned it. I was there the whole day. I didn't see any opposition to ourselves. There was a group of about 60 or 70 young anarchists calling themselves Antifa, um, flying the flag of communism, which communism really is just like Islam without, without Allah. Um, but what we did see in Europe, we saw attacks. And when I went out to Copenhagen recently for a demonstration with Pegida, um, there was about there was probably only about 200 of us, but as we walked through the city, from everywhere, there was such hatred coming at us from the from these young Antifa activists. And to myself, to the mindset I made, it didn't really bother me. It doesn't really bother me. One of them ran through the crowd and tried to punch me. But when I turned to one of the women, Anne Marie Waters, who's a spokesman for who's a deputy leader of Pegida UK, and I asked her what she thought of it all, she said she was terrified. Now that's why they do it. They do it to crush and stamp down and silence and dismantle any opposition to the Islamization of Europe. What we saw in Dublin at the weekend, we saw um, the Pegida didn't even have to get to have their demonstration because they come under violent attack. Um, their leader was hospitalised with a pole. Um, so these are the tactics that they use. Because Pegida has got so big in Dresden, it's very hard for them to silence it in that city. But obviously to the new movements propping up in Europe, their pure motive and their pure pure ambition is to silence them and destroy it before it gets the opportunity to get big enough. Oh, that's the, that's the germ. That, yeah, that's in that's in Dublin. The footage there. So they they tried that very on with the English Defence League, but then the English Defence League. What the problem you get when you have a clash like that was once you come under attack, which the English Defence League did very early on. Once you come under violent attack, there's only certain sorts of people that go back out on the streets. Now, you want to reach mainstream England, middle England, you can't have a, a hostility like that on a demonstration. So we chose specifically in, in the UK to basically march in the middle of nowhere. Unfortunately, it's not safe and it's not free for us to walk through our city centres because we will get violently attacked, but not just by far left activists, but obviously every city centre in the UK is now occupied with Muslim youth. So we'd come under violent attack. So we chose to demonstrate in the middle of nowhere. And it was and it was a success because the police managed to keep anyone any opposition away from us. We managed to have our own peaceful silent walk. There was approximately about six hundred of us, even though the media report two hundred. But obviously this was the first demonstration and, and as a success for us was having a silent and peaceful rally to show people what we're about as an organization. And I'm not a lot of people have sit on the fence. And we hope that they join us on our next one on the second of April. Now, I saw you tweeted probably about an hour ago now. There was a guy who Channel 4 said confronted you. This was a guy who had been violently attacked in his own home, I believe, by Muslim migrants. And he was basically repeating this point that we debunked over and over again, that these beliefs, these violent, intolerant beliefs are only held by a tiny minority. Now, I was talking before the break about, you know, the footage out of the conference in Norway where the guy is completely confused as to why the media is characterizing these extremist beliefs as extremists, this Muslim speaker, because they're beliefs widely held by most, quote, moderate Muslims. And they all raise their hand in the audience to agree with him. But we see from the left, again, this, this alignment with Islamism. We had feminists in Cologne handing out roses to Muslim migrants at the biggest refugee center there, just a couple of weeks after the mass molestation of women in Cologne. We've had volunteers in migrant camps in Germany and Calais being raped, and then their fellow left-wing agitators tell them not to talk about it because it might discredit their cause. And they call themselves feminists, and they call themselves you know, supporters of women's rights. So why are feminists and the left in general so you know, beholden to defending Islam when we know it's the most repressive, intolerant belief system in existence, why do they still hold to that? Because it's very easy to do that. It's very easy. There's no criticism aimed at you for doing that. If you do what we do, 
and you tell the truth about Islam and you criticize. We're going to reconnect with Tommy because his audio was cutting out there. And basically, you can go and watch the video on his Twitter page, what I was just talking about. This, this guy confronts him. He was literally just beaten up by Muslim migrants. And he goes to Tommy Robinson and says, how, how dare you suggest that there's no positive benefit to bringing all these people into the country? And again, you have to make it make a distinction in the debate. Yes, skilled immigration is good at a slow pace when these people can be integrated into society and when they're generally economically prosperous and they've got a stake in society. You can't just import 1.1 million people within the course of 12 months, as Germany has done, without there being massive cultural and societal problems, which is what we've seen. And this is out of Gateway Pundit. Mother of 10-year-old boy raped by migrants says she regrets telling children migrants need our help. Now, this is a story that we covered yesterday. A Muslim migrant in Vienna, Austria, raped a 10-year-old boy. He didn't try to flee. He thought it was perfectly normal behavior. He went back to the swimming pool. They actually arrested him when he was in the swimming pool because he thought that this was just, again, routine behavior to go around raping 10-year-old boys because he thought it was justified because he was sexually frustrated. It turns out his mother is an immigrant, as is the child. And she initially taught her 10-year-old boy to be welcoming of these refugees. Well, now the boy's mother is speaking out. The mother of the boy who was raped by an Iraqi migrant in a swimming pool in Austria says she regrets teaching her children to be welcoming to migrants. The boy's mother, Dunja, who arrived in Austria as an immigrant in the 90s from Serbia, said she had always taught her five children to offer the same hospitality to new arrivals that she had herself received. So now she's spoken out and said, look, this is a massive problem, which is interesting because the... Migrants from Serbia tend to be less radical than those coming from places like Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. So now she's speaking out against that after initially teaching her son to be welcoming of the migrants. And again, we're trying to get Tommy back on the line to talk about this. But here's another story out of Germany again. Refugees beat soccer players with iron rods in the street after tournament. Germany, a country of 80 million, received over 1 million migrants and unvetted refugees in 2015. Angela Merkel is expecting another million migrants this year. In five to seven years, the migrants will bring in their family members. And now Build reports, basically these soccer players, they just finished a tournament. They were chased by 20 thugs from a nearby migrant camp and beat with iron rods, basically complete melee. Um, and again, this is part of the cultural enrichment. You can go over to Canada. This is a story out of the rebel media. Liberals plan to build refugee camps on seven Canadian military bases. Taxpayers will fund mosques, Korans. So it's not good enough, as in Germany, to, you know, evict Germans from their own homes to bring these Muslim migrants in, to take over gymnasiums, to take over office buildings, in Berlin to pay at taxpayer expense for 10,000 migrants to stay in three and four star hotels in Berlin, 10,000 of them, while Berlin's 10,000 homeless population remains on the streets. They're talking about 600 million euros to pay for this. And now the Canadian military has been ordered by Justin Trudeau, who is a massive social justice warrior, of course, to draft plans to house more than 6,000 Muslim migrants on a long-term basis at military bases, according to documents obtained exclusively by the rebel. This sounds almost too ridiculous to be true, but they've got the documents. They're here in the article. Included in the Department of National Defense budgets are hundreds of thousands of dollars set aside for religious support, including the purchase of Muslim Korans, prayer mats, and foot washing towels all part of the diversity that Canada is importing at taxpayer expense. The plans also call for the construction of mosques or worship centers using taxpayer dollars. Now, this is interesting because Canada initially said they were only going to bring in women and children from Syria, so actual refugees and not these economic migrants that have been exploiting that and pouring into the West as a result. 
For a typical migrant family, it's going to be 